So what can I say about the market realities? Um, syllaba and curricula, right? These are things that you guys deal with insofar as you service a network that provides curriculum management and learning management software and online learning opportunities that have content loaded in it that's delivered by professors that's consumed by students, right? So it's, a, it's, it's some distance away, but in the end, the network is something that's going to uh, be critical in this, in this kind of stuff. S some of the value that I see in the network is with the interoperability, right? So we've solved interoperability, or you guys are solving it every day, at layer one and two, right? So this is something that uh, needs to be modeled. We, we've solved it to some extent with the HTML, JavaScript sort of world with the back-end Java enterprise architecture. So providing the web application. But these are still stovepipes, right? And so I'm hoping that with help from institutions like yours, we can solve this on a more generalized manner using the learning that we have in the lower level stack, right? So this is a solicitation for information, right? What do you know about solving this problem? And how can you help us figure this out at the layers where we don't have this figured out yet? Right, the layer seven stuff or the layer four stuff or whatever, um, application layer stuff. Uh, all right, so I'm going to uh, just leave that for the future and go into interoperability a little bit more. Um, so some of my perspective on interoperability is that it is lightweight and that it's open and that it's uh, derivable, meaning you can use it for future for for other purposes, meaning you can readapt it. Um, it also has to have a transparent community. So these are some of the things that I'm hoping we can get to in the application layer that will drive value into the network layer, right? So you have NLR and other institutions who have relatively transparent governance, relatively transparent uh, service models. Now, uh, with W3C and IEEE and other institutions that also manage some of the lower level stuff, they also have these wonderful models of solving this. Now, one of the questions I have is, as the market gets smaller, so as we start talking about specific curricula in K-12, how do you have interoperability standards that can model what we have with these multi-million user networks that sort of focus up into these very sort of pristine institutions that try to gather together and make sense of these world? You know, so W3C is a good example. They have a wonderfully open model, but in the end, they have to make a decision. They have to release H HTML5, even though it's taken quite a while. It looks like it's finally coming. How do we model that in K-12 and higher ed for moving data securely, right? for managing identification, authorization, authentication, for dealing with some of those infrastructural questions that are going to drive value in the apparatus of learning, the learning management systems and all of that stuff on top of it? Um, one of the things that I've learned from watching groups like yours is that opt-in and self-assembly is the way to go, right? So this notion that we can design a standard and impose it on somebody is, to me, an unreasonable expectation. So, all right, I'm going to move on from that. Some of the things that I see that are really important in this space, decoupling transport, right? So this notion that you all have a transport mechanism and we need to ride on top of that and the flexibility to ride what we need on top of that to me is a critical aspect of this infrastructure. And obviously using the existing standards that we have. So I'm gonna move, move on to that. And in the interest of time, I'm gonna move past that. So I just wanna frame out what I just got through. Um, <laughs> so we're looking at sort of two worlds, right? Two places to head down as these services are built on top of your open network, right? And you can build stovepipes that solve one problem once, and when the funding dries up, it goes away, right? And you, you're left with legacy. Or you can build interesting, this is, the tr this is the no trees. This is the rip out the trees because it's going to work better today. And this is some kind of crazy world that maybe you want, maybe you don't want. I want. <laughs> um, where people have the freedom to use the network to do the kinds of things that they want to do, right? So this is something that uh, I, I'm really curious to hear what your reactions are as the people who provide the utility infrastructure that is required to go down one of these two directions. So I think that your wisdom and your experience is something that can really help us solve this problem in some interesting ways further up the stack. And that's what I'm trying to come here to do is to appeal with regard to the National Broadband Plan 
the kind of things that we're trying to create with broadband, right? It's not enough just to be talking about broadband as a service, right? As a thing, use it, build it, they will come, right? It's about saying there are going to be solutions that are built on top of this network, and if we build them one way, we will end up with a lot of this stuff, a lot of stovepipes that create limited value that don't uh, build, don't have knowledge intensification properties that create more and more value as time goes on, or we can have a little bit of a potentially crazier, less controlled world that permits innovation, right? That permits people to develop the kind of solutions on your networks that are going to cause your networks to become more and more ubiquitous and more and more uh, indispensable. All righty. So with regard to student records, this is an area that we made some recommendations in systems interoperability. Uh, so there's PESC, there's common application, there's some vertical integration questions with K-12. Uh, sometimes I feel like we're waiting for Godot, right? This is, you know, in the 70s we had the green and white striped paper and we're waiting for the student record to get off of that piece of paper over to the university. And I don't know how much further we've gotten in many cases. Sometimes if you've got a nice state system, you get a little bit of this vertical integration, but it's, uh, it's not ubiquitous by any means. And, uh, and I really think that it, it shouldn't be that hard to get us there, but it requires some coordination between the stovepipes. And I'm just wondering, what do the standards look like? What do the specifications look like? What do the institutional governance look like in order to cross some of those stovepipes to get some of this network system talking to each other, not just at layer one, layer two, but a little bit higher up the stack? I highlighted this K20 federated authentication. This is a big question I have, and I think a lot of you have a lot of expertise in this question. So let me just describe a bit about what I'm talking about there. So what does a federated authentication system look like? Uh, how, how can we create a system? Uh, I'm in some ways an anti-enterprise architect or engineer in my day job before I came to the federal government. So uh, I'm not always the enemy, but I'm looking for ways to try to create solutions that don't require high levels of design, high levels of architecture. So what would a federated solution that creates authentication look like? So there's a couple that are out there, SHIB and, uh, and uh, OpenID and, and some things like that. And how can we port those over or build on top of them or do something to them to get them more ubiquitous? And what can the federal government do to help that? I am not suggesting that the federal government develop an authentication system for the nation. I am not suggesting that, right? <laughs> not suggesting that. I am asking how we can have a federated identity system that works across the country and that people opt into and that they use because it's valuable and that it creates services on top of networks that people can use in a more effective way than they can use them today. And I think each and every one of your networks would benefit if, meaning benefit your institution directly in terms of value and benefit your division directly in terms of creating more demand for the services you provide if there were federated authentication that could be used to cr provide deeper services. Let's just give an example. I've got a piece of content in one place. I've got a teacher in another place. I've got a student in another place. That content is licensed. That student needs to know who they're talking to in order to run a class. Right? They have to know that those students remotely. To do that over the network right now is really difficult and requires a high degree of orchestration. Right? among the different participants, that the institutional providers to that school and that school have a relationship. You know that email is attached to that student. You have to organize all those things in traditional classroom ways right? that look a lot like enrollment when you show up at the desk in the 1960s and put your paper on the, you know, the long, if you, I don't know how many of the people relate to this. This is a story from my father. These long cardboard tables are, 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 that you lay your paper on and you move from, secretary to secretary down the stack until you get out the other end, right? It's early workflow processing, right? And, and that's, it doesn't feel all that much different with online learning, right? Once you get in the course, it's pretty great. But getting to the course seems still problematical. And I think that this is something that can make online learning just really hit that J-curve and take off in terms of its ability to be deployed anywhere by anybody and be consumed by anybody anywhere because you have this capability of doing identification, right? Because you can do the licensing, you can solve the problems for login, right? All this stuff. So I hope I'm being concrete enough. I realize that these are conceptual issues, but I'm trying to be as specific as I can about the ways that I'm trying to think about this. And I re realize, and I've been to a couple of EDUCAUSE conferences on this subject, as well as talking to some people, that, look, 
anytime you, you add workflow to the problem, right, it gets 100x more, more difficult. Right? So you can have authentication, but if you still have the workflow on top of it, it's just a really hard problem. But we can't even crack this nut, I feel like. I feel like we're on a treadmill until we get after some of this infrastructural stuff. And that's what I'm soliciting advice, soliciting partnership, soliciting contribution. Whatever you have, this problem needs to get solved. The federal government can't do it on its own. This is not a role for the federal government. But we might be able to help in some way. And what the appropriate level of help is and what the appropriate level of engagement is on your part, I think are going to be two big factors into how far we get with this.